not every project's gonna be a success. So what lessons can you learn? I'm gonna give you guys five steps to streamline the process of becoming an ultimate DIYer. That is only if you wanna build cool stuff, save thousands, and become known as the jack of all trades of your neighborhood. Number one, seek out new opportunities with confidence that you will fail many times. Sooner or later, you'll find out which way your sprinkler lines are ran. I'm sure most of you, like me, have gotten to the end of a project and realized I could have saved so much time and money if I would have just hired it out. But at this point, it's when you need to stop, look back at the lessons you learned instead of just giving up and not trying that again. This would be way too long of a video if I went through and listed out all my failed projects. The point to remember is turn every one of those into a learning experience. At the first, I showed you how my lumber was literally dropped off for my home edition. I learned from that and you can rest assured that I was very specific on how I wanted my windows, siding, drywall, and even my roof dropped off or delivered after that. As to not discourage you from trying after number one, number two is, it's not as hard as you think. This is the thousand foot view looking over for anyone that wants to DIY. And to do that, you really only need two things, technical knowledge and creative knowledge. All of you out there have a list of projects, a honeydew list, whatever it may be. Now, some of it may be just you don't have time to get to it, but for a lot of those, if you take a look, they might just be missing those nitty gritty details of, hey, I don't really know how to do that specific thing, and you don't really wanna do it because you don't know how much time it's gonna take, you don't know if you need a new tool or what have you, so it gets put down at the bottom of the list. I want you to be able to tackle those items. So much so that you don't have to spend 10,000 hours to become an expert. So this is how I make any project simple. And that is whether it's fixing a sprinkler line or building a sweet go-kart from scratch. Start by breaking down the project into very specific tasks. And next to those, you are going to either circle, write, whatever, check off the items that you know how to do and you have the tool to do it or something you got to come back on or learn something. And if anything else, it will help save you those 10 trips back and forth because you know what you need to get at the big box store. I'm just kidding, there's nothing that can prepare you for that. You'll be going back and forth to the store numerous times. Now back to creative knowledge and tons of people will say, oh, hey, I don't have creativity. I wish I could think of stuff like that. Well, I guarantee you, you already do just based on the fact that you clicked on this video, you were somewhat curious about DIYing or about saving money, learning new things. And little by little, you'll notice that you'll be putting your own twist on things or you'll be able to do jobs better like those little tricks that the pros do. I did just this with my railing. I, I didn't come up with the concept of a railing nor the design, but I had the need and I saw the design some from some woodworker that was doing, I think a barn door. So, hey, let's mash it together and create something new. And I mean, not gonna lie, I think it turned out pretty sweet. Sweet. And whether you care or not, did you know the full quote is actually a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one? Number three, simply start and start simple. Now the idea behind this is to get you a bunch of wins under your belt to get your confidence up, but also it will help you know whether you like or dislike stuff along with the failures aren't quite as big. And some words of advice, if you've never done any home improvement project, don't start with an entire home edition. Everybody loves those home flipping shows. They make it look easy because they do it on a daily basis. Instead, start with a playhouse edition. There's nobody that loves every aspect of DIYing. Just for example, I hate drywalling. It's just one thing, I don't know, maybe I need to do more of it or maybe I'm not very good at it, but I don't like doing it. So I typically don't do it or I shy away from those projects. Whereas about 20 years ago, I picked up my first welder and well, if you've seen my other videos, you know that little side hobby's kind of gotten out of control. So whatever it is you are curious about, get out there and start making. Number four, how do you actually learn that new skill or trait? Nunchuck skills, bow hunting skills. For those young kids, or if you got time and money, sure, go to a trade school. The next best thing would be to surround yourself with people that can teach you that new skill. I'm lucky enough that I actually live next door to an electrician and kitty corner to a plumber. So you bet I've picked their brain on numerous projects, but 
Do not be that annoying neighbor that's not willing to pay for it. The real right, 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 there. right. Still a lot of room. They went to school and learned their trade and those secrets. I did this exact thing with my plumbing for my addition, and then also I've added a couple 220 plugs. And before I actually hooked it up or plugged it in, I had my neighbor come over, look over everything, make sure I did it right, and then that way I wasn't gonna burn my house down. So keep that in mind. If it is like something, you know, electrical or maybe something that could kill you, don't be afraid to take the extra steps of precaution for safety and or for the extra help or maybe take that extra class or two. And for all of you that hate your neighbors, well, turn to YouTube. I, I kid you not, YouTube is one of the most beneficial platforms that's free that gives you the biggest bulk of information that you could ever ask for. Now take that for a grain of salt. So you have to make sure that if it's something new that you go and get all of the best from everyone out there and then go have at it. Even though technically I am a professional, I have my PE license and no, that is not a physical education license, but that doesn't really help out with these videos. So we're still here in number four and I'm sure you're probably curious on how did I save $15,000? And it actually was a lot more than that. So for our home edition, the part where I saved $15,000 was I was actually the general contractor for my home edition. Pro tip, in almost every city, the homeowner can be the general contractor. So you don't have to hire that out. You can actually do that. If you've never done anything or don't know what they do, well, watch a bunch of videos or learn from someone else the first time, and then you'll know what to do after. Now where I saved even a ton more money, like probably 80 to $100,000 was everything I did on my own. So just so then whether you care or not, for my home edition, I hired out the foundation and the framing and then everything after that pretty much was about on me. I learned a bucket load, which hopefully throughout my videos, I can pass on to you. Number five, enjoy what you're actually doing. Now this would be find those skills or projects that you actually like doing. If not, you're gonna get frustrated, burned out, or it'll be like drywalling and you don't do it. Get a bunch of skills under your belt and you will become the jack of all trades neighbor. Now whether that's good or bad, that's up to you. Come springtime, I have a bunch of lawnmowers lined up and that is because of the skill I learned from fixing over 40 go-karts. Yes, I have either built, fixed, or restored over 40 go-karts. Something I love doing. Like, subscribe, we'll see you next time.